Hi, welcome to this Corbin Maths video on bearings. In this video, we're going to look at what bearings are and we're going to answer some typical questions on them. So first of all, what is a bearing? Well, a bearing is a direction of travel and is measured clockwise from north. So if we were traveling in this direction, if we wanted to find the bearing, we would measure the angle clockwise from north. So if that was 130 degrees, the bearing would be 130 degrees. So in this diagram, if we wanted to find the bearing of this direction, again, we would draw a north line and we would measure the angle clockwise from north. So that would be 290 degrees. And finally, if we wanted to find the bearing of this direction of travel, again, we would measure the angle clockwise from north. And in this case, it would be 60 degrees, but bearings are given as three figures. So if it's less than 100, you put a zero in front. So it would be zero, six, zero or 60 degrees. So if we were traveling north, our bearing would be zero, zero, zero degrees. If we were traveling east, it would be zero, nine, zero degrees. If we were traveling south, it would be 180 degrees. And if we were traveling west, it would be 270 degrees. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some examples or some questions, and we're going to focus on questions where we've been asked to measure the bearing of one position to another. And we're also then going to do questions where we've been asked to show a location if we've been given the bearing and the distance. OK, let's, so let's have a look at our first question. So our first question here, we've got a diagram and we've got our north line. That's quite important. So north is going up and we've got Antrim and Belfast and we've been showing their locations with these little X's. And we've been asked to write down the three figure bearing of Belfast from Antrim. So whenever we're doing a question, we've been asked to measure the bearing of one position from another. The first thing I tend to do is I tend to join up the points. So I get a ruler and I join up the two points. OK, and then the next step is to find where you're starting from. So the question says, write down the three figure bearing of Belfast from Antrim. So we know we're starting from Antrim. OK, so our next step is to draw a north line at Antrim because that's where we're starting from. So we'll draw a north line at Antrim. So it looks something like this. So our next step is to measure the angle clockwise from north to the line withdrawn. So I tend to mark that on as an arc like so. So we want to find that angle. We want to measure the size of that angle. So we're going to get our protractor and we're going to line it up with Antrim. So we're going to turn it so that we have got our zero at the top. And we're gonna put that on our north line like so, so the zero is lined up perfectly at the top with the north. And we've got our cross at the center of the protractor on Antrim. And then all we need to do is measure the angle clockwise from north around to the line. So let's do that. So we'll start at zero, we go around 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And then we've got 101, 102, 103, 104. It's just short of 105, so it's 104 degrees. So that means that this angle is 104 degrees. And that means if the angle is 104 degrees, clockwise from north round to the line, that means the bearing of Belfast from Antrim is 104 degrees, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. OK, let's have a look at our next question. So again, we've got our north line and we've got Milton and Castletown. And we've been asked to find the three figure bearing of Castletown from Milton. So again, our first step is to join up our two locations, our two towns. So we'll get our ruler and our pencil and we'll join those up. OK, so we've joined up our two towns. So our next step is to make sure we know where we're starting from. So the question says, write down the three figure bearing of Castletown from Milton. So we're starting from Milton. So we're going to draw a north line at Milton. So let's draw a north line at Milton. So it looks something like this. So we've joined up our two towns and we've drawn our north line. So we now want to measure the angle clockwise from north to that line. So this angle here. So let's get our protractor and let's line it up with Milton and our north line. So like so. So let's make sure the cross is on Milton and the zero is on the north line. So now we've put our protractor down, we want to measure our angle. So we're going to start at zero and we're going to go around clockwise until we get to our line. So zero, 10, 20, 30, 40 and then 41, 42, 43, 44, and it doesn't quite reach 45, so it's 44 degrees. So that angle would be 44 degrees. Now the question says to write down a three figure bearing of Castletown from Milton. So we put a zero in front, so it's zero, four, four degrees. And that's our answer. So if the answer is less than 100, make sure you give it as a three figure bearing by putting a zero in the front, and that's it. So the bearing of Castletown from Milton is 44 degrees, or zero, four, four degrees. So here's our next question, and we've got another diagram, and we've got our north line, and we've got Port Rush and Larne. And the question says, write down the three figure bearing of Port Rush from Larne. So again, our first step is to join up our two locations. So we'll get a ruler and a pencil, and we'll join up Port Rush and Larne, like so. And then we want to make sure we know where we're starting from. So we read the question, and it says, write down the three figure bearing of Port Rush from Larne. So we're starting at Larne, so we're going to draw a north line at Larne. So it looks something like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mark on our angle, the one we want to measure. 
So remember, bearings are measured clockwise from north. So we're going to start on our north line and we're going to go around clockwise until we get to the line that joins Port Rush and Larne. So we're going to start here at north and we're going to go around clockwise until we get to this line. OK, so this is the angle we want to measure and this is a reflex angle. It's an angle greater than 180 degrees. Now, there's three ways which we can measure this angle. I'm going to show you two of those now and talk about the third one. So first of all, let's get our protractor and let's measure it using our first approach. So that again is to turn our protractor so that we have got our zero the top we have got it going around to the right and what we're going to do is we're going to measure 180 degrees because this is a 180 degrees protractor so that's the greatest angle it can measure so what we're going to do is we're going to start at zero and go around to where 180 degrees is like so then we'll move our protractor and we'll draw a straight line going down from Larn to that point so like so and that means that this side of the line is 180 degrees now if we measure this part this obtuse angle and add it on to 180 degrees we'll find the size of the whole angle so let's do that so let's get our protractor and now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around and we're going to put the zero on the line we've just drawn so we're going to line it up like so and we're going to make sure we've got our zero at the bottom and we're going to go around again clockwise until we get to our line and when we do that we get 10 20 30 40 50 all the way around to 145 degrees that means that this is 145 degrees here because we put zero at the bottom we went round to 145 degrees and if we add together our 180 and our 145 degrees we'll find the size of this whole reflex angle so let's do that so 180 plus 145 is 0 plus 5 is 5 8 plus 4 is 12 so put the 2 down carry the 1 and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 so that means that this angle is 325 degrees. So that means that the bearing is 325 degrees. And that's a free figure bearing because obviously it's bigger than 100. So that's one approach we could have used. Another approach would have been instead of measuring the reflex angle, what we could do is measure the acute angle and take that away from 360. So let's have a look at the question again. So here we've got Port Rush and Larne, and we've got the bearing we want to measure, this reflex angle here. And if we wanted to find the size of this angle, we can measure this small acute angle and take it away from 360. So we want to get our protractor the way around. So we're going around anti-clockwise, and we're going to put this again, the cross on Larne and the zero in the north line, like so. And we're going to go around and measure the size of that angle. So because because we're going around anti-clockwise, instead of having the zero at the top, this time we've got the zero underneath. So we're going to start here at zero and we're going to go around to 10, 20, 30, and we've got 35 in the middle. So that means that the angle here is 35 degrees. So this angle is 35 degrees. And if we take that 35 degrees away from 360, we find the size of the angle we want, the size of the bearing. So we'll do 360, subtract 35 degrees. And when we do that, we get so again, it would be 325 degrees. So the size of this angle, measured clockwise from north around to our line, is 325 degrees. So that means that our bearing is 325 degrees. And the final approach that you could use is actually to buy a 360 degree protractor. And they're fantastic because you can put your zero at the top and you can just go around to the line and you can actually read off the bearing right away. So buying a 365 degree protractor can be very useful whenever you're doing bearings questions. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question, we've been given a diagram and we've got our north line as shown and we've got the points D and C and we've been given a scale. And the scale says that one centimetre represents 200 metres. So sometimes we're given questions where we've been given a scale and we might have to use that whenever we're answering the question. So our question says, use the diagram to find the actual distance of C to D. So the first step is I'm going to join them up. So I'm going to get a ruler and a pencil and I'm going to join them up like so. And I'm going to measure the length of that line. And so using my ruler, I'd measure the length of that line, and that would be, if I measured it, it would be six centimeters. So that means that the line joining C to D on the diagram is six centimeters. But in the question, we've been told that one centimeter is equal to 200 meters. So if we multiply 200 by six, we'll find the actual distance between C and D in real life. So we'll do that. So we'll do six multiplied by 200. Well, we do six times 200, and six times 200 is equal to 1,200 meters so that means that the distance from c to d the actual distance from c to d is 1200 meters and that's it okay so let's have a look at the next part of this question so the next part says find the bearing of d from c so we've been asked to find the bearing of d from c now first of all the two points have been joined up already so we've already got the line that joins the two points so what we now need to do is figure out where we're starting from so the question says find the bearing of d from c so we're starting from c 
So let's draw our north line at C. So it looks something like this. So we now want to measure the angle clockwise from that north line round to the line that joins C and D. So let's mark that angle on. So it's that reflex angle. And we want to measure the size of that angle. So again, let's get our protractor. And remember, we can do this in two different ways. You could turn it around to measure the obtuse angle and take it away from 360 if you wish. Or in this case, I'm just going to put it on as normal like this with our zero at the top and the cross on top of C. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on where 180 degrees is. So around from north, around to there is 180 degrees. Let's draw that on. So that's 180 degrees from north around to south. And now we need to measure our extra angle, this part here, and add it on to get the size of the full angle from north around to the line. So let's get our protractor again and let's turn it around. So it's like this and put it again on top of C so that the cross is on top of C. And again, we want to make sure our zero is on that line that we've just drawn. So we want to go around clockwise until we get to the line. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees. So that means that this angle is 60 degrees. So from north around to the line would be 180 degrees plus another 60. So that's 180 degrees plus 60 degrees, which would be 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus 6 is 14, so put our 4 down and carry our 1, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So it would be 240 degrees. So the bearing of D from C is 240 degrees. Now again, we could have turned our protractor around the other way and started at 0 on the inside and gone around to our line, and that would have been 120 degrees. And that means that this angle was 120 degrees, and if you take that away from 360, that would leave you a few 240. Alternatively, you could get a 360 degree protractor. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question. This time we've been given just one place. We've been given Redville, and there's Redville on the map, and we've got our north again pointing upwards, and we've been given a scale. And the question says that one centimetre represents five kilometres. And in this question, we're going to have to mark on the location of a particular place on the diagram. And the question says the bearing of Boston from Redville is 110 degrees. So we know that Boston is on a bearing of 110 degrees from Redville. And then we've been told the actual distance of Boston from Redville is 30 kilometers. And then we've been asked to show Boston on the map. So let's start off by looking at the bearing. We know that Boston is on a bearing of 110 degrees from Redville. So let's draw a north line at Redville, so it looks something like this. And then let's take our protractor and let's find where 110 degrees is. So 110 degrees would be, starting at zero, going round clockwise, would be here at 110 degrees there. Okay, so we know that Boston is in this direction from Redville. And the distance of Boston from Redville is 30 kilometers. So let's find out where exactly Boston would be on the diagram. So we've been told that one centimeter is five kilometers. So because it's 30 kilometers, if we divide 30 by 5, we'll find out how many centimeters it would be away on the diagram. So if we take our 30 and we divide that by 5, that will tell us how many centimeters it is away on the diagram. So 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. So it'll be 6 centimeters away. Okay, so we know that Boston is in the same direction as this point, And so let's take our ruler and let's line it up so that the zero is on Redville. So like so, and we're going to draw a line that is six centimeters long because we know that Boston is exactly six centimeters on our diagram away from Redville. So we'll take our ruler and we'll draw a line that is six centimeters long. So we'll start at zero, we'll go along until we get to six centimeters. So there. So that means that Boston is at the end of that line. So Boston would be exactly here. So that's Boston. So that means that Boston is on a bearing of 110 degrees from Redville, so 110 degrees. And on our diagram, it's got a distance of six centimeters. And in real life, if you times that six by five, that would be 30 kilometers. So in real life, it would be 30 kilometers away based on that skill, and that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at our last question. So on our last question, we've got an island and we've got a shop and a house on the island. There might be other things on the island as well, but we've just been showing the shop and the house. And we've been given a scale that one centimeter represents 250 meters, and we've got our north line. And the first question says, find the bearing of the house from the shop. So our first step will be to join up the house and the shop. So let's get a ruler and a pencil and let's join up the shop and the house. So something like that. And the question says, find the bearing off the house from the shop. So we want to draw a north line at the shop because that's where we're starting from, from the shop. So there's our north line and we'll get our pencil and we'll put our N for north at the top there. And we've been asked to find the bearing off the house from the shop. So we want to measure the angle clockwise from the north line around to the line that joins the shop and the house together, so that angle. So let's get our protractor and we'll line it up so that we have got our zero at the top, so zero at the top, and we want to go around clockwise until we get to our line. So we've got zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 
100, 110. It doesn't quite reach 120. We've got 115, 116, and 117. So the bearing would be 117 degrees, and that's it. So the bearing off the house from the shop is 117 degrees. And our last question, our last question says to find the distance between the house and the shop. So we've got the line that joins them, so this line, so let's use that. And we've been asked to find the distance between the house and the shop. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the length of this line, and then we're going to use our scale to find the distance between the house and the shop. So let's take our ruler. And as you can see, if we start at zero at the shop and go along to the house, that is eight centimetres. So on our diagram, the distance between them is eight centimetres. So we know that one centimetre is 250 metres. So for every centimetre is 250 metres. So that's going to be eight lots of 250. So we'll do eight multiplied by 250. And when we do eight lots of 250, that will be 2,000. So that will be 2,000 metres. And that's it. So in this video, we looked at what bearings are. Bearings are a direction of travel. They're measured clockwise from north. And they always have three figures. So if it's less than 100, make sure you put your zero in front. And that's it.